start this session. And we're going to start with a little bit of explanation on uh, interest rate. Yeah. There are basically several types of interest rate. The one we're going to talk about today is called the simple interest rate. Simple interest. When you deposit money, or when you lend money or you borrow money, in either case, sometimes you get paid interest or you pay interest on that particular amount of money you borrow. And that interest sometimes can be a simple interest. A simple interest means whatever you borrow money for whatever period of time, you pay that exact interest on it, uh, simple interest every time, or every time the interest is due, you pay the same amount regardless of what the, uh, depending basically on the amount of money you borrow. So let's say for instance, if you borrow $100 at 5% interest, yes? So that means, let's say you borrow, you're doing that for four years. So that means after year number one, you're going to pay 5% of the money you borrow for interest. And to figure out how much it is, well, we can take the amount borrowed times the interest rate, which is 0 0.05. In this case, you always use it in decimal form. So at the end of the year, you pay $5 interest for that $100 you bought, okay? And then the second year, the second year, you still have to do the same thing. You still have to pay interest on that amount. And that interest is still gonna be 100 times 0 0.05, and still gonna be $5. So it doesn't matter for how long you borrowed that money for, you're always going to be paying $5 interest every year, okay? So at the end of the year, at the end of the four-year period, so your money due is, or how much money you're going to be, the other person is collecting, whoever lends you the money, would be the $100 that they lend you plus the interest every year, yes? And since there are four years of them, so that's going to be four times a five, which is 120. So at the end of the period, you end up paying $120 in total to uh, the person or to the bank you borrowed money from. Okay. <coughs> so looking at the scenario, Consider you borrowed or your initial amount is present value. Let's call it PV. Yeah. And let's call the interest rate R. Yes? Let's call the interest rate R. Let's also call every time the number of years that you're going to borrow the money at is T years. Okay. So the interest rate, the interest, I'm sorry, is equal to whatever money you borrowed and the rate at which you borrowed at multiplied by how long the money is going to stay. Remember, when we did 5, 5, 5, 5, right, we did 4 times 5 which is the interest rate you get for one period, which is present value times the rate, right? And T was a four. In that case, how many years you borrowed the money for? Okay. So this is simply the simple interest rate formula to determine. Now remember, T is always in years. Okay. So if you're given in any other uh, unit, you have to convert it to years before you can use it. 
Okay. Let's take a look at some example on applying this particular prop. It says, to finish her apartment, Maggie Chan borrowed $4,000 at 3% interest rate. So Maggie Chan borrowed $4,000 at 3% interest rate. Uh, from her parents for nine months. For nine months. Is the interest rate over here? So there will be no confusion. So she borrowed the money for nine months. I hope that's what you're texting over there. The problem to your buddies. Uh, it says, how much interest will they pay? Uh, will you pay? Or will she pay? Since we're talking about Maggie. We need to figure out how much interest she has to pay on those $4,000. So simply, we're looking for the interest, right? So I equal present value or the value or the money she borrowed, right? And how much money did she borrow? 4000 So that's going to be 4000 times. What was the interest rate? 3%, so we're going to put a 3% here for a sec. And for how long did she borrow it for? Nine months. But I just said we need to use years instead. So how many years are nine months? How do I figure that out? Okay, what would that be? What would that be? 0 0.75. 0 0.75. How you got that? Uh, yeah, but how did you get it? Why, why 0 0.75 exactly? What was the procedure you did to get? I'm sorry? Divide that by 12. If we're given the, if we're given the time in months to figure out how many years, you just simply divide by 12, right? If you're given the in days, you would divide by 365, right? If it's given in weeks, you will divide by 52. So you always have to change it to number of years. And the easiest way is you can change it to fraction, whichever uh, decimal. I like to put it in fraction because this way I always get the exact value we got. Yes? Now, 475 will still give you the exact value. But if it was four months, then it's not unless you put it for over 12. So now we're gonna go ahead and, now here is the thing, the 3% here, we need to change it to decimal before uh, we can use it in the calculation. Unless you calculate, that can give you the 3%. So that's 4,000 times, what is 3% in terms of decimal? 0 0.03, so you move the decimal place, Point two places to the left. So that's 0 0.03 times 9 over 12. And according to this, we should end up with $90. So the interest paid on that amount is simply $90. Yep. Yeah? That takes care of the first prop. Let's take another look. It says Bank of America issued 10 year bond with a maturity date in 2022 and an annual simple interest rate of 5.7%. So, any question on that one? No, let's move that.
So now let's take a look at the second one. It says we have a bond, a 10 year bond, 10 year bond. And then we have an, an annual simple interest of R is equal to 5.7%. says the interest is paid semi-annual. Paid. Let me write that in there. This is per year. Paid semi-annually. Uh, okay, so San Diego buys $10,000 bond. So we have $10,000 bond. The question is, determine the following. How much interest will San Diego uh, earn every six months? Okay, so we need to know how much interest is he going to be getting every six months. Right. So how do I do that? Okay. We use the same thing, the same formula we used before, right? The amount of, we use I equal EV times R times T, right? In this case, it is 10,000 times R, which is 0 0.057, just change it to decimal, times, since we're looking at every six months, every six months, six months is a half a year, right? So we can say times one half, or we can say times six over 12, and that's still going to be good, yeah? So when we multiply this, we end up getting was it 285? 285. So for a six month period, the amount of money is getting as 285. So in another way, every six months, Bank of America pays him $285 for the $10,000 bond that he has. Just question number two, determine uh, how much interest will he earn over the 10 year life of the bond. So we need to figure out interest over 10 years. We need to know the interest over 10 years. For this particular question, we can solve it in several ways. One way we could still use a form. We could still use a form. But instead of one half, now it's going to be what? 10. And then we can say I equal 10,000 times 0 0.057 times 10, and that should give you 5,700, yeah? So that's five zeros, move the decimal places, five places, and then you end up with 5,700. What's the other way we can do that? We already know how much he's getting every six months, right? In 10 years, how many six months periods are there? 20, yes? So that means in 10 years, he's gonna get 20 that amount. Because every six months, he's gonna be getting that amount. Yeah? For 20 years, he's gonna be getting that amount. How many times? 20 times. So we can say, again, this is the same as 
times 20, and that's still going to give me 5700. So either way you solve it, it's fine, and that will give you the, the same answer uh, in either case. Yeah. Any question? Okay, now. One more question on that particular problem. How much money, how much money would San Diego have in 10 years if he saved all his money? He will have $15,700, right? He will, also, he will have whatever he started with plus all the interest he collected. Yes? So if he was saving his money, we can say the future value of his money or the future value would be simply what? The present value plus the interest, which is 10,000 plus 5,700, and that's going to equal to 15,700. Okay? So now let's talk a little bit about future value. Any question on this? No? So here's what we said so far. If you invest some money at some interest rate, yes, for a period of time, for a period of time, your money is, or the interest you collect is I is equal to present value times R times D. Yes? And another thing is, if you save this money and you didn't spend it, then your future amount collected will be your present value plus your interest, which is the present value, and we said the interest is EBRT. Yeah? Then that was equal to notice we have the present value as common factor in both those terms. So I can factor that out in the present value times one plus R. So that would be the formula for finding the future value of a simple interest. Yeah? Let's do an example. It says find each maturity value and the amount of interest paid. It says Hay borrows $20,000 from his parents. Those people have nowhere else to go except their parents. All right. So this guy borrowed $20,000 from his parents at a 5.25 interest rate. at 5.25% interest. It says he plans to repay the loan in nine months. Plans to pay back in nine months. Okay, so first question is, find the maturity value. In other way, how much is he going to pay back in nine months? Okay. So to figure that out, we can use the formula we just wrote down here to represent the future value that he's going to pay, right? And what is he going to pay? A future value is equal to present value times one plus RT. Yeah. 
So what is that equal to? He borrowed 20,000 times one plus. The interest rate he's gonna be paying is 0 0.0525. That's the interest rate in decimal, right? Times the time, which is nine over Because this is how long he's gonna uh, pay that, uh, and how long he's gonna pay it is in nine months, and so therefore nine over twelve would be how many years in that. So when we do that, we end up with twenty thousand seven hundred eighty. What was it? Eighty-seven point five. So he's going to pay back $20,787.5. Okay? Any question on that? The other question is find the interest rate paid. I mean, the interest paid. To find the interest, to find the interest, an well, easy way to do that is we already know what the future value is, okay? We already know how much he borrowed. The difference between the two would be simply interest, all right? So we can say this is equal to future value minus present value, which is 2787.5 minus the original is 20,000. And that should give me 787.5. So he pays $787.50 in interest. Okay. Anytime you're working with these type of problems, you always want to make sure that at the end, you round your answer to two decimal places. Yeah? Because we're talking about money. So if you're working with my math lab and you don't round it to two decimal places, it's going to tell you it's wrong. Any question on that? No? Simple and easy? All right. Okay. It says, how much money would you What's the maturity value for a loan of $11,280? So now we're looking at a different loan. A loan is $11,280. And the interest rate is 9%. And then, instead of nine months, I just put 85 days. Should they have anything about that? All right. So now, the only thing difference is, beside the amount, it's just basically, instead of month, now we have what? Days. Yeah? yeah. So the future value is still going to be the same as far as formula concerned. Let's figure that out. So the future value is equal 11,280 times 1 plus the rate is 0 0.09. Yeah? What is the time now? So what do I use for the time? We have 85 days. How do I convert that to years? Divide by 365. Divide by 365. Or if it's not specified, it's 365. Sometimes, sometimes you see problem where it says use 
360 uh, for one year. Okay? It would say use uh, one year for uh, 360 days for a year. So you have to use 360 instead. But if it's not specified, it's always 365. Okay? If they specify, then you're going to go ahead and uh, use exactly what they specify. Once you, use, once you do that, then you should end up with 11,516 and I believe it was 42 cents. 42 cents. So now, what's the interest rate you paid? I get it. The interest rate would be this amount minus and that would be your interest rate for this particular problem. Okay, next. It says, Sally borrowed $15,000 and is required to pay an amount of $15,315 in four months to pay off the loan and interest. What is the simple interest rate? So now we're given the future value. Let's go ahead and write that down. So she borrowed $15,000. And she is required to pay fifteen thousand three hundred thirteen in a period of four months. Uh, let's make that fifteen, so we'll keep that same number in four months. And it says to what is find the simple interest rate. So now we need to figure out what is the interest rate she's paying on that amount. <clears throat> yes? How do I find that? Well, simply, we know. We know what the, this is called the future value, right? Because this is how much she's going to pay back. Okay? This is called the uh, present value, right? This is how much she's going to have to pay. This is the time in period, right? In, in years, right? So all I need to do is, there's a whole lot of way to figure out what the interest rate is. Okay? Now, I'm going to write down the formulas and see which one we're going to be using, or which one would be more appropriate to use at any time. We've learned that I equal P, V, R, T. Correct? This is one way we learn. We also learned that the future value equal uh, the present value as 1 plus R, T. Yes? And the term I'm looking for, the fact that I'm looking for, is simply the R. Okay? And we also learned that present value is equal to, uh, we didn't know that anything about the present value just yet. Right? That's all the two equations we have. So now, if I want to use this formula, if I want to use this formula, I need to know what is. I, yes, I need to know what the interest is, I need to know what the present value is, and I need to know for how long. If I know all these three, I can use that form. Yes? If I want to use this form, what do I need to know? I need to know the future value, I need to know the present value, I need to know for how long, then I can find out. Okay? Now, if I have a choice of using either one, 
I'll use either one. I don't have a choice, then I'll use the one that I have all the information for. It looks like we have all the information for this. Yes? If you see this, can you figure out all the information for that one, though? Okay, the only thing is missing. We do have a PV, right? We do know how long, correct? The only thing we don't know is the interest. But can I find that out? It's one way of doing it. If you feel that this is easy way to use it, and you know what the interest is, or you can find it out, find out the interest and use that form. Yes? If you can do that, then you will use that form. But if you know the future value, you know the present value, you can figure out the interest by subtracting them, right? So let's figure out what the interest is. So the interest is uh, 15315 minus 15,000. That's equal to $315. All right? That's my interest. Now, I'm going to use this. So 315 if EV is 15,000. Um, I don't know what R is. This is what I'm looking for. Yes? Times the time. The time is how long? Four months. Yes? But I need to change it to year. So that would be four over 12, or basically one third. Yeah? That's when you don't get exact values. So now how do I solve this? I can... Bring the 12 by multiplying over here. So that's be 12 times 315 equal. This times that will be 60. So R equal, we can just divide by that. 12 times 315 divided by 60. Remember, your R here is in decimal form so when actually when you when you find it it's going to come out to be in decimal form so that's going to give me 0 0.063 if you want to change it to if you want to change it to uh, percent depending on how they ask you for the answer, that's going to be 6.3%. I notice if you use this formula, it's not going to be uh, any, any difference. You use this formula. We just skipped one step. By when we move this part over to this side, that's exactly what we're doing. We subtract. So we moved it before and if you can use that formula, that's fine. Yeah, that's a little bit easier to, to deal with. Not to say there are any difference. All right. So now, given The future value is equal to the present value times 1 plus RT. One thing is sometimes we will be looking for the present value. To solve for the present value, we divide by 1 plus RT. Divide by 1 plus RT. So now we have the present value equal the future value. One plus. Okay. Let's do at least one more example and see where we we do that. This is going to be a little bit interesting. So
It says Larry Parks owes $6,500 to Virginia Donovan. The loan is payable in one year at 6% at six percent interest rate. So here's the scenario. So this guy owes $6,500 payable in one year at 6% uh, simple. Okay. And this scenario happens to all of us. Let's see what happened. It says Virginia then needed a month. Needed the month. Four months. before the due date. Remember, she lent the money for one year. She cannot collect on them before that year. And so she has to wait for one year. However, four months, four months before she was able to collect, she needed money. So she sold the note to the bank. So she took her note, which is $6,500 loan, took it to the bank to sell it. The bank says, bank wants nine percent return. The bank wants nine percent return. The question is, how much, how much should the bank pay? Yes. So here's what we got. First, we need to know how much is this loan worth in one year? Yeah? We need to know how much is this loan worth in one year? So this way we know how much the bank will be collecting in one year. Correct? Okay, let's do that. Not worth loan worth would be. Well, uh, we're gonna use the formula PV1 plus RT to figure out how long, how much is it gonna be worth. It's 6,500 times one plus. Now remember, R in this case is based what Virginia is charging. Because that guy, is, I don't care if they sell it to the bank or whoever, this is the agreement with him. He only pays 6%. Yes? So this formula is going to be based on 0 0.06. Yes? How long? Oh, let me put the other term first. How long did he borrow it for? One year times one. All right? So that is going to give me, uh, let me see how much it is. Six thousand eight hundred ninety-nine. So now we know whatever the bank is gonna buy, at the end of the day, is gonna collect back six thousand eight hundred ninety dollars. Yes. But what does the one know? What we need to know how much the bank is gonna pay today, so he can collect that much money. Okay. So we don't know. The present value of the bank. Present value of the bank is what he's going to pay today. Yes? What is the bank collecting in the future? That's your future value for the bank is going to collect 6,800 now. Yeah? What interest does the bank want? <clears throat> According to, say, to this, the bank wants. 9%. So for the bank, R is 
nine or seven. Yeah. Now the node is already eight months late. So how when is it due? It's due in four months. Because he is she she needed the money four months before what? Before it's due. So the bank only is gonna lend the money for how long? Four months. So T equal four months. So now I can use this formula to figure out how much the bank is going to pay for that money. Yes? So now we can say the present value equal 6, 8, 90 divided by 1 plus R, which is 0 0.09 in this case, times T is 4 over 12. And that should give me an amount of Six thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty two cents. Yeah, so another way if the bank wants to buy that note and collect nine percent, he has to pay for it. Six thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars and thirty two cents. Yeah. Any questions? No. All right then. I think we're done for today. I'll see you back here next time.